length of the outage. Um, DPL apparently misjudged the amount of time they were taking, hit some construction problems. But we did take it very seriously, and we're going to be doing a root cause report with both BB Hospital and uh, DPNL to get to the root cause of what the problem was and what we can learn from it. And it's kind of ironic because this Wednesday we're having our tabletop uh, exercise. Right. So uh, last week apparently was a dry run for this Wednesday. <laughs> Luckily, this Wednesday will not affect the public. Yeah, seriously, and we realize that in our current day and age, telecommunications and internet uh, is much, much more important to everything going on. So, I appreciate that. I think we all appreciate that. I mean, I don't, we got a couple calls in the morning, emails, texts about it, but I think people generally understand that sometimes these things take, you know, unforeseen consequences. Right. So. And, you know, we, we will be putting out more information as we get it, but we don't want, right now, it's all third hand and piecemeal, and that's not the appropriate material to discuss. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you, Tom. Okay, we have a few announcements. Um, one is uh, the mayor is out of town and will be back hopefully later this week, but so that he will not be having his weekly coffee on Thursday morning. Um, on October 28th, there will be a, a disposal of um, a day of hazard waste and electrical devices. That will be over at the uh, Schley lot facility there. So if you have any hazardous waste or old electrical electrical devices that's a good day to dispose of them in, in an environmentally sound way and the, oh excuse me the, the chief reminded me and any kind of illicit drugs or or other drugs that, that you may have gotten over the counter that you want to well, somebody wants to give you or yeah um, that's a good opportunity for that as well um, speaking of the chief um, we have a planned road closure on king's highway um, that the Lewis that the, the police department will manage and that's on Halloween night the 31st uh, chief do you have anything more I think what I understand is 530 to 830 the um, Kings High will, will be shut down from DeVries Circle to Savannah slight modification okay uh, on the 31st uh, Halloween night and everybody knows the uh, Kings Highway corridor uh, puts on a, a pretty unique yeah, uh, Halloween um, party for lack of a better word with uh, hundreds if not thousands of uh, parents and trick-or-treaters uh, and uh, if I could I'd just like to introduce Kevin and Mary Keene in the back right uh, who are kind of the uh, the genesis of this uh, closure <laughs> not to blame them but uh, it'll, it'll be fine uh, but they came to me and uh, expressed some concern about oh safety we've managed the event uh, yeah. successfully you know in my seven years here uh, we did have some concerns with the mixing of vehicles and uh, trick-or-treaters at night, obviously. Uh, he came to me uh, a couple weeks ago and we kind of kind of got the ball rolling for me. Uh, so we have reached out to uh, Del Dot mm -hmm. uh, for assistance with sign board notifications and, uh, and actual help on the night of the detour. Uh, what we're planning to do is starting at 4.30 and ending around 8 p.m is a uh, shutdown of King's Highway from McPhee the whole way to, uh, well, directly in front of our building here, 3rd, Savannah, and King's. We're going to divert all traffic that would normally be coming down King's Highway onto Savannah. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Freeman Highway is always an option, so there will be plenty of uh, ways to get around town. You just won't be able to use the King's Highway uh, corridor proper. Uh, you know, obviously we are in touch with the uh, Lewis Fire Department, BB Hospital, EMS providers, our county dispatch, uh, to make sure everybody is aware and uh, can prepare accordingly. We are, uh, we're gonna staff that. We're gonna use a series of barricades in other areas. We'll have uh, plenty of policemen, uh, you know, on foot uh, patrolling as well. Uh, yes, McPhee. So does that mean McPhee is closed? To no, McPhee is where the stoppage occurs on the Kings Highway. 
you'll be able to travel down McPhee to Savannah, right. up Savannah, then in town. McPhee to Savannah. Yep, Kings Highway, the whole way up uh, to where it meets uh, Savannah. Yeah. But it doesn't prevent, obviously, people coming in from uh, bringing out of Kings Highway because they can just simply go left on the Green Circle to get to Savannah Road if they need to. Or McPhee. Or McPhee. Yeah. Yep, it's a minor. Uh, Inconvenience, right? Yeah, but, you know, we want to get the word out early so people can prepare. People that are within that corridor uh, generally know that's a stay home night. You know, they don't try to move their cars out of there because of the, uh, right. the massive uh, trick or treaters. So I think we'll be able to manage it pretty uh, successfully and safely and uh, have a really nice event as, as they always do down there. Right. Well, thank, thank you, G. Spell and the Kings, for, for spearheading this because I've been down there during uh, Thanksgiving, especially on Manila Avenue, very crowded. Yeah, so it's terrific. Good. Any other questions or comments yeah. from the table? Yeah. Okay. Um, one last uh, announcement is uh, the canal dredging project is um, from Roosevelt Inlet to the bridge, uh, Freeman Bridge, I believe. Yeah, it's a Freeman Bridge. It is slated uh, to begin on with staging from the contractor, a company called Dredget, uh, on October 6th. Um, by October 13th, 14th, 15th, somewhere around there, they're scheduled to begin dredging. That will be on a schedule, it'll be a seven day schedule from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So it's going to be pretty comprehensive, and, um, and they should be done sometime in mid to late December, and that's that's the target date for completion. So that's something everyone should take note of and um, adjust accordingly. But I think typically I don't think it disrupts too much, other than boat recreational boat traffic, maybe some of the uh, commercial fishing boats as well. But I think they've worked around it in the past. So. Um, that's what I have for announcements right now. Um, any, Carolyn? No, yes, Tim. Tim, nobody? Okay. So, uh, what the, we do have some deletions uh, to, for the agenda here. Um, well, first thing we're gonna do, just so you know, we're gonna move up. We have two items of unfit on uh, new business um, that will be moved up to the beginning and then we'll, we'll start with un unfinished business after that. Uh, deletions we have are related to number E5 and E6 appointments to various committees. Um, we, we, the mayor unfortunately is not here, but I think he had some people in mind, but I think we're gonna wait and see when he gets back so we can, we can solidify those. And um, on the consent agenda, F2 and F6 will, will be deleted. And I think other than that, I think we're ready to go to the proclamations, recognition, uh, and recognitions. So we've got some unique ones for this month. Um, the first one is Extra Mile Day 2023. And the recipient of this is Lloyd's Market. Um, I'll read the, uh, briefly read the proclamation. Whereas the city of Lewis, Delaware acknowledges that a special vibrancy exists within the entire community when individual citizens collectively go the extra mile in personal effort, volunteerism, and service, and is proud to support the Extra Mile Day that will be on November 1st, 2023. The City of Lewis is a community which chooses to shine a light on and celebrate individuals and organizations within this community who go the extra mile and make a difference and lift up fellow members of their community. <coughs> Excuse me. And the city of Lewis is a community which encourages its citizens to maximize their personal contribution to the community by giving themselves wholeheartedly with the total effort, commitment, and conviction to their individual ambitions, their family, friends, and community. And the city of Lewis, whereas the city of Lewis recognizes Lloyd's Market for going the extra mile by creating opportunities for area farmers to bring <laughs> locally grown, healthier alternatives with superior quality, natural and organic produce, and fresh cut meats, improving the carbon footprint by selling products closer to home, requiring less transportation, and supporting the alignment of our citizens' personal and social values with their buying choices. Lloyd's, 
family owned and operated, continues serving locals and visitors in the same building on the same corner of Savannah Road and Manila Avenue for more than 50 years. So let me ask um, our friends from Woods Market to come up so I can make this presentation. I was going to read I, the undersigned Andrew Williams, but I'm not Andrew Williams. <laughs> Proclamation is for you to, you know, highlight and post right there in the beginning. Population, the second one, uh, National Magic Week, October 25th to October 31st. If you're all like me and others, I think this is the first time you've heard of National Magic Week. <laughs> but interestingly enough, whereas magic expands the imagination and brings a genuine sense of wonder and joy to those who observe it, the arts performance requires significant study and practice and meticulous attention the detail, technique, and performance skills, and magic, also known as prestidiation, I think I got that right, is an ancient art that is enjoyed as an amazing and delightful experience, a theatrical presentation, and an exciting form of entertainment for audiences around the world. And magicians spend their lives entertaining people of all ages with delightful mysteries that demonstrate illusion, sleight of hand, and humor, putting smiles on faces of young and old alike. And professional magicians, part-time pros, and hobbyists are all avid and enthusiastic entertainers who love sharing the job of their art and the mysteries of their magical abilities by making people happy. And magicians of Lewis, Jack Knoll, Charles Joseph, and Glenn Cord give generously of their time, talent, and enthusiasm for charitable purposes in the Lewis area. And the art of magic is deeply loved by those who study and perform it, as well as those who witness the art and science of magic, mentalism, sleight of hand, and illusion. Therefore, on behalf of Andrew Williams, Mayor of City Lewis, I do here proclaim October 21st the 31st as Magic Week in the City of Lewis. Do we have representatives from? Um, they disappeared. Yeah, they disappeared. <laughs> they, they performed their first. Something we said. We said that one too. I think uh, Councilman Richard has been had, had that in the can for a while. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I think it's kind of interesting how we all these various weeks that we acknowledge. But one thing I've never been able to figure out is magic. I mean, it still baffles me for no end. So. There's that. Um, we have two more um, proclamations here, I believe. Uh, we have a um, community planning month proclamation. Um, it's something that's done pretty much every year. We've done this for a while, Janelle. I do have a copy of the proclamation and I'm hesitant to read it, but it's not too long. Okay, Community um, Planning Month. Whereas change is constant and affects all cities and towns and suburbs, counties, boroughs, townships, rural areas, and other places, community planning and plans help manage this change in a way that provides better choices for how people work and live, and community planning provides an opportunity for all residents to be meaningfully involved in making choices that determine the future of their community. And the full benefits of planning require public officials and citizens who understand support and demand excellence in planning and planning implementation. And the month of October is designated the National Community Planning Month throughout the United States of America and its territories. And 
the american planning association endorses the national community planning month as an opportunity to highlight how planning is essential to recovery and how planners can lead communities to equitable resilient and long lasting recovery and the celebration of national community planning month gives us the opportunity to publicly recognize participation dedication of the members of the lewis planning commission and other citizen planners who have contributed their time and expertise to the improvement of the city of lewis we recognize the many valuable contributions made by professional community and regional planners and the city of lewis um, extends heartfelt thanks to those and their continued commitment to public service by these professionals. I will just simply add that I think the city of Lewis um, has a terrific and very experienced public planner, planner in uh, Janelle Cornwell. We're one of the fewer, few municipalities around that actually has a city planner on staff. So I, I think, um, and uh, Anne Marie Townsend is our city manager for a few more days. Um, has a background, a strong background in planning, and I think it's it's benefited the, the community of Lewis in, in a large way, having that kind of expertise guiding us through the various developments and land use issues that we face all the time. So thank you, Anne-Marie, thank you, Janelle. And while we're on this topic of Anne-Marie and planning, I have one more proclamation to read. And this is more than a proclamation, it is a tribute to Anne-Marie Townsend, our city manager. Whereas Anne-Marie Townsend, a native of Baltimore, Maryland, is hereby recognized for her distinguished 27-year career in public and community service to the residents of the state of Delaware, and Anne-Marie, whereas Anne-Marie is passionate about education, she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree from Towson University a Master of Public Administration degree from the University of Delaware. Amory holds certifications from both the American Institute of Certified Planners and the International City Management Association. Always a lifelong learner, she recently earned a certification as a climate change professional. Amory is a founding member and past president of the Delaware Women Leading Government and past president of the Del Delaware American Planning Association organizations we just uh, honor. Whereas Anne-Marie began her career in planning with the state of Delaware Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Control from 1996 to 2002 and then in transition to the Office of State Planning Coordination from 2006 to 2000, excuse me, from 2002 to 2006. She then joined the city of, of Dover in, in 2006 serving as their Director of Planning and Community Development until 2017. Anne-Marie was then recruited to the City of Lewis where she has served as City Manager for nearly seven years. Anne-Marie's public service extends beyond her professional life. She has been a tireless advocate for many charitable causes including the Dover Interfaith Mission for Housing and the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, the world's largest nonprofit funder of type 1 diabetes research. She is past chair of the Diabetes Association's Southern Delaware Walk and is currently training for the Ride to Cure Diabetes. Be it resolved that we, the mayor and the city council, on behalf of all the residents of Lewis, make it known that Anne-Marie Townsend has been a respected and effective leader of our city government and we are grateful for her invaluable service to her staff, the mayor and council, and the citizens of Lewis. nothing prepared. I thought about preparing something, but I wasn't sure if we were going to 
Well, there we go. You say something, I think, and I'll uh, okay. just give me a few minutes. Um, words can I express how I feel about you and what you, how you've helped me. It's one thing to work in the uh, business world for the amount of years that I did. It's another thing to come into the city government. Um, from the first day when I when I met you and we talked about things, I said to you, it's, it's a different animal for me. I may have the experience on many things, but it's a completely different animal. And I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping me as much as you have to be a better council person. No words cannot express. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have some comments, Emory? Sure. I don't have anything prepared, mm -hmm. so feel free to gavel me if I've rambled too much. Um, so it's just, it's been an honor and a pleasure to work with all of you to, to serve the people of Lewis. Um, it's definitely a difficult choice to, to leave and to move on, but I think um, I'm looking forward to the new opportunities and, and you know, I'll still be around. Um, it, it, one thing I will say about, about this job and really about other positions I've held in, in public service, but definitely this, it, you reach a point where you don't know where you as a person and you as a professional, it, it just, it, it becomes your identity. And it, it's gonna be really hard <laughs> because I feel like I'm losing my identity. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to what's to come. I know that you guys are in very solid hands with Ellen Lorraine and Janet and the team here. Um, one of the things that I think I'm most proud of of my tenure here is that we have really assembled a, a fine team of professionals who are committed to serving the public um, I think that as a management team among the, the department managers, we have really worked to develop a cohesive um, relationship and we, we work well together and respect each other and that doesn't mean we always agree on everything, but we can disagree without it you know, becoming a problem and I think that's, um, that's a little rare these days. So I, I think it's wonderful to work with people who are able to um, express different viewpoints and, and, and when you walk out everybody's, everybody's good and somewhere along the way because of the different viewpoints you've gotten to a better solution and I feel like we've done that time and time again but, and I was talking about the management team but certainly as a city council and working with city council and the larger community we've dealt with some really challenging issues and Obviously, not everybody is always happy, but I think that we have all made a point to consider the public's interest. And we may disagree on how that is done, but we've had some really good compromises and some really good things that have come out of that discourse. So um, I've been glad to be a part of it. Thank you for letting me serve and um, letting me be a part of this wonderful community and you'll see me on the trails, you'll see me at the farmer's market and, I know. and certainly eating um, in the many restaurants, so thank you. Thank you. That was nice. Thank you. Would anyone else like to say anything before we move on? I, I mean, I will only echo a little bit what Carolyn said. I mean, I, I think most of what the proclamation said is 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 what I believe is. I believe you've been a terrific asset to the city. Uh, I've also learned a lot from you. I mean, coming into a situation where you know you don't have much of a background in um, elected office, you know, you look for guidance. You know, from you, from Janelle, from Janet, others. Here who've been very helpful, and I think you know it's a credit to you for building a really solid team. You're, you've been a good leader, but you built a solid team, and I think that will serve us well down the road. And uh, thank you for all you've done for Lewis and for us personally. I think we have one comment from uh, Mr. Panetta. Yeah, and Anne Marie was at our last board meeting, and we I think echoed everything you guys said, and 
me personally, from my personal perspective, having worked on both the city side and the BPW side, uh, I can't say enough about, you know, that we didn't always agree on everything, but as you said, we walked out in a better way and it never hampered uh, our friendship or discussions. So, if you need anything, small nu modular nuclear reactor, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. And by the way, like I said, that was the sentiment of the entire board of uh, Public Works, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, unless there's any more comments or anyone online wants to make a comment, I think we'll, we'll move on. There's no sound online. Yeah, they can't hear us. They can't hear us. Oh, they can't. Okay. Um, We're having audio issues and waiting on Mid South, but I haven't gotten anything back from them. Okay. Um, so we have a, just a few more things here. Um, appointment of ex officio member to the BPW Mitigation Committee, and that's something um, um, that has been established, and that's going to be a, a Tim Councilman Tim Ritzer. So you don't, you don't think, <laughs> you can get up and go, Tim. Unless you, unless you didn't know, you're now the new ex officio to the BPW Mitigation Committee. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. The heads up on. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't like it, you can you can talk to Mayor Williams about that. Okay, I'll do it. Thank you. Um, we also have a recognition of employee of the quarter, and that is Billy Krause from the maintenance department. I don't think Billy is here, but I think it is worth noting that these awards are um, voted on by their peers, which is always an, is always special to be acknowledged by not one of your superiors, but your peers. So that, and we have one more recognition of, and this one's of anniversaries involving the police department. Um, detective Casey Krabs, he's uh, just hit his five year anniversary and Corporal Jonathan Moyer is at now has served the Lewis, city of Lewis for 10 years. I don't see either one of them here, but I think that's terrific that they've established that kind of longevity. that you haven't chased them off yet or anything. <laughs> okay, I think, um, I think that does it. We're moving on to the consent agenda. Um, as I mentioned previously, we're, we have uh, deleted F2 and F6. Um, I think we can do that and then we'll move on to the city manager's report. So um, can I get a motion? Um, is there any discussion on the consent agenda? No, I'll make a motion. Mike, can I have a motion, please? <laughs> you want to second for Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to move that we uh, uh, accept the consent agenda. Uh, there have been some corrections suggested for the minutes, but they're typographical yeah. and so forth, and they'll be yeah. taken care of. So otherwise, I just ask that we approve. Yes. Carolyn, you second. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 City manager's report. So, that one Lorraine McCabe is going to give us the city manager's report. <laughs> okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. All right, so are you ready to roll? Okay, so the report that I'm giving you is as of September. And first, I'm going to start off with a few statistics of uh, departmental operations. Uh, the first one being about refuse and the tonnage that was collected in September uh, 23 and comparing it to September of 22. So in most areas, there was a decline in the collection. Um, there was one increase in yard waste in September compared to uh, 22, so most of it was a reduction in tonnage collected. The next will be about business licenses. There were four new long-term rental license issued in September, and there were nine uh, regular business licenses. So at the calendar year end of 2023, because we do issue business licenses on a calendar year, uh, those are the numbers issued for businesses, for short-term rentals, and long-term rentals. And we had no short terms during the 30 Not in days. September. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The next slide is going to be a breakdown of the uh, building permit. 
um, as this, the pie chart can be rather small, but if you look at the table to the right, that does show the breakdown of September for business permits issued. New homes were at seven. Our residential renovations were at 34. Demolitions at two. Solar panels at one. Accessory structures at three. Commercial renovations at two. Industrial renovations at four. And then other is typically like a, a fence, and they were two. So year to date, on a fiscal year to date, total building permits issued have been 385. Uh, the next is going to be regarding the uh, recreational bonfire permits issued. And again, it's comparing uh, September of 23 to September of 22. Uh, from the chart up above, you can see bonfires in 23 exceeded bonfires in 22. Mm -hmm. In other areas, there was a minimal uh, increase or decrease from 22 to 23. Uh, I did think park use and events did stay the same at 11 each of those months and this just is a breakdown of the uh, park use and events requests the majority of those came through via the city uh, the next being beach and bash and under bonfire permits the city civic rec website was uh, where most of those bonfire permit requests came in followed by a quest Eleanor I may ask a question yeah. uh, regarding this part of the chart uh, okay. uh, this is uh, this is September 22 to sep just September 22, September 23. It's not year to correct. It's not the it's just the month. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Lots of bonfires. Yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, and then we're going to get into the um, operations of Lewis Line. I think we're familiar with um, this chart that we see each month again. The Ferry and Second and Market Streets and Vinedale Museum are the biggest uh, stops for the Lewis Line in and September. And yes, and Vinedale is a new stop. Um, these have historically been heavy uh, stops for this transit. If we flip to the next slide, this is giving you a breakdown of September operation, September 23 operation, and then a year to date, and then comparing it to September of 22, and year to date of the first uh, season that we had Lewis Line. Um, there, passenger wise, year to date, there was an increase, 63.93 compared to 62.66, the whole program. Uh, the rider cars was a slight, slight decline, as well as the uh, those cars used uh, punch to ride the Lewis line. The total revenue was 66.6490 year to date for 23 compared to 6800. But I will say that the extra duty revenue, this is where we have partnered with the Historical Society, the Zwanadale Museum, and the Chamber to provide the Lewis lines as a means of transporting patrons at these establishments on tours or to see different um, uh, programs such as uh, the DeBrock artifacts down at the uh, state park that was one through the zoning deal. Did we do the overflow? We did not because it got rained out. Oh. But keeping that in mind. These are like special events. Is yes, that they, they are. are. Yes. Right. Okay. So the city did do more of that in 23, which is why you're seeing extra duty revenue year to date of 2400 compared to uh, the prior year is 1,200. We right. also did the History Book Festival. Mm -hmm. Right. That was the other one. So we're seeing an increase in that, um, despite the modest decline in um, the ridership. Okay. All right. So now I wanted to get into a few of the uh, highlights of things that occurred in September, and that may be carrying over into future months. Uh, the first being that the parking meter se season ended at both beach parking lots on September 30th. Uh, the meters at the 1812 lot, Canal Front Park, Third Street lot, as well as the single space meters, they will go offline uh, for October 14th. So beginning October 15th, the meters will be done for the 23 season. The restroom at Johnny Walker Beach uh, is not a year-round restroom, so it needs to be winterized, and that has been done for this season. The Savannah Beach restroom is a year-round 
facility and it will remain that, that way. The lifeguards completed the 2023 season on Monday, September 14th. I think it's been mentioned to Captain uh, Strom Edwards, he will be providing an end of season recap for Mayor and City Council at the workshop uh, later this month. Uh, the Environmental Subcommittee of the Planning Commission held a uh, interactive public workshop, input workshop, to get uh, feedback on some environmentally sensitive topics. Uh, that committee uh, will be reviewing that information and uh, will be meeting October 16th at 1 o'clock in City Hall. Many of our uh, resident and non-resident property owners have received a postcard asking for their help in picking up items that may have been left on the beach, whether they are kayaks, paddle boards, chairs, dock boxes, sailboats, uh, canopies, Lights, <laughs> and we're asking that those items be picked up by October 16th. Our maintenance department will be going uh, down the beach to pick up any items that are left. And is able, we're able to store some items that are in good condition. Obviously, those items that are unsalvageable will be tossed. But those that can be saved, we will store them until October 31st only. We have you limited. Guys just left the beach. They have been, yes. Kind of stored. Yes. <laughs> so hopefully, with the end of the season, we can uh, clean up the beach and uh, get rid of some of those unsalvageable items, and therefore providing access uh, for everyone to visit the beach. On tonight's agenda, you will see that the city's audit report for fiscal year ending 31-22 is before council. Um, it is anticipated that there will be action taken by council. And the audit report for March 31, 2023 has already started. And the goal is to have that done by February of 24. I did want to bring to council's attention that uh, Fitch Ratings affirmed the city's AA bond rating. And as of right now, the city has approximately 1.6 million on those general obligation bonds that were issued in 2005. And as we approach preparing the budget for FY 2025, those bonds will be paid in full for that, that budget year. The city will once again be participating in a national community survey. Uh, this survey is expected to be mailed to those randomly selected households mid to late October. And we're just asking that residents complete either the paper survey or the online survey. And as we say, this survey does provide the city with um, means of evaluating services, safety, quality of life, performance, and then we can compare ourselves to other municipalities throughout the nation. So be, be on the lookout for that in the mail. That, will that come okay. from a City of Lewis return address, or does that come from a third party? No, it will have City of Lewis contact information, so it should have our city shield as well as our okay. mailing address. Good. Thank you. Sure. Uh, the city will also be um, offering, actually I think this is through... Um, through Dell.Dot, a second open house for our bicycle master plan. This will be this coming Wednesday, and it will be in the Lewis Public Library from 4 to 6.30. Uh, some items that will be available to uh, get information on are the infrastructure recommendations that were shared and discussed at the Bike Heads Advisory Committee meeting on September 26th. So um, please make a point of stopping by the library on this coming Wednesday. And lastly, I just wanted to uh, provide an update of some uh, meetings uh, as we head into the holiday season, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and uh, New Year's that we, we're going to need to be adjusting some of the workshop meeting dates. The regular meetings will still be held and scheduled second Monday of the month, but the workshops do need to be changed uh, for October. That means moving the workshop from the 26th to October 27th, and that is because the Sussex County Today and Tomorrow Conference will be held on the 26th. In November, the 
monthly workshop will be held on the 30th instead of the 23rd. Uh, the 23rd is Thanksgiving Day and the City Hall is closed on Thanksgiving Day. Oh. Yes, and then with the December workshop, um, since council workshops are the fourth Thursday of the month, in December that falls between Christmas and New Year's, so there will not be a, a December workshop. Oh. I know, it's a pity. <laughs> So then I just wanted to also uh, keep in mind that November 10th, the city will be closed for Veterans Day, and then again, Thanksgiving the 23rd and 24th. And that is the report, Judge Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ellen Lorraine. That was very helpful. Um, any comments or questions of Ellen Lorraine? No. no I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. Good job. Terrific. Mm -hmm. So um, as I mentioned previously, we're going to flip-flop uh, new business with unfinished business. There's two items on uh, a new business that we'll discuss beginning with I-1. That is a uh, discussion and possible action regarding a waiver request permitting connection to the City of Lewis Water and Sewer Service for 34114 Donovan's Road. So my understanding is that this is a, um, a household that is, uh, that is seeking to connect um, with BPW and but is not seeking annexation right not at this time not at this time so I, I think I see Robin here is there uh, Robin is there anything you can add in terms of or is BPW prepared to move forward has any insight on that yeah um, <clears throat> excuse me there's currently uh, sewer and water laterals to the property that was done part of the uh, Dunning Road pro um, sewer and water project mm -hmm. originally so there is current curb stop and clean out for the property and it's accessible um he talked to austin the owner mr kern kern keen 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 um Jim keen. and uh austin explained to him some of our process but told him first he had to come before mayor and council to get consent first okay <coughs> um Councilwoman Jones, and I think so. I think we can. Oh, we can. I just want to check if you or, or Councilman Ritzer have any questions or concerns. No, I, I, I mean, it seems pretty straightforward to me. It is pretty straightforward. No, I have no concerns. And this complies with our goals of moving as many people out of uh, our office uh, septic, septic septic systems septic, right. mm -hmm. into the city service or BPW service. So I have no objection. No, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Can I get a motion? Then? Yes. Or can we just simply just agree that we're going to move forward? Do we, or do we need a vote? You should probably take a vote. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. So you want a motion? A motion, please. All right. I'll make a motion that we uh, waive the request for any connection to the City of Lewis Court Sewer Court 34114 Donovan Road. And I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, moving on to I-2, discussion of possible action regarding the pay PKS financial audit for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2023. I think uh, Andy Hain is supposed to be yeah, here. He's here. Oh, Andy Hain is here, okay. Um, Andy Hain is, is one of the auditors who worked on this and he's gonna make a quick presentation for us about the results of the audit. Welcome, Andy. Thank you. Uh, as uh, um, he said, uh, Andy Haney here from PKS. Um, is it, I'm sorry, is it Haney? Haney. Okay. It, it's, it's hot. My mistake. Um, just here to give a quick uh, overview of the audit to financial statements. I'll point out some specific pages, but don't feel like you need to flip through them. I think uh, council has found copies and uh, electronic copies have been provided as well. Uh, and I'll say we've previously discussed the financial statements with Mayor Williams, Councilperson Jones, uh, Ellen Lorraine, Amory, and Liz, and uh, I'm gonna just go through and kind of point out some of the highlights from that meeting. Uh, but first of all, uh, start out with the most important things. Uh, there's two reports in your financial statement package. Uh, as I said, that's the two most important things in the report uh, from our perspective. The first is our independent auditor's report uh, that's presented on pages one through three of the financial statements. 
and I'm happy to report once again we issued an unmodified opinion that's the highest opinion we can issue on a set of financial statements and then moving way to the end of the financial statements the last several pages on pages 50 through 57 that's our government auditing standards report I think some of you that have been here that's a little bit different than an opinion report it's more uh, if we noted any internal control situations that needed to be uh, pointed out specifically in the report we're happy to uh, note that there was no internal control matters that needed to be reported on there and you'll see the very last page of that is actually called a schedule of finding and responses and it says there's none on that page so that uh, again that's what you guys are shooting for uh, a couple other things I'll just point out uh, discussing some of the details of the financial statements uh, I won't get into the numbers too much but um, as a government, you guys present two sets of financial statements. You do what's called the government-wide financial statements. They're on pages 14 and 15. Government-wide financial statements are kind of long-term focused. Um, they present things like your, your bonds payable, your notes payable. They present all of the capital assets of the city, uh, like infrastructure, uh, buildings, land, police vehicles, uh, and any depreciation related to those. Uh, and they also present uh, your pension liability and the assets you guys have set aside for your pension. So two important things as an auditor we always look at there and important things for you guys as a city. Uh, one, concerning the notes payable and the bonds payable. Um, all required payments, uh, principal and interest, were made throughout this year. Uh, and actually, at the end of the year, you had decreased the overall principal balance owed on those. So that's what you want to do make all the payments, make the payments timely, and kind of reduce that if you can. Uh, second thing is, is the pension uh, liability and the pension assets. And once again, the city funded the pension 100% according to what the pension plan's actuary uh, requested. Uh, that's something the city has always done. Um, so again, that's something that um, you, know, you want to uh, make sure you're doing. <clears throat> and then the other set of statements that you guys present in here that are a little bit further back and they start on page 26, those set of financial statements are fund statements. Um, the city has two major type of funds, uh, governmental funds, which are the funds where that kind of runs the government and that's split up into some smaller funds. And then you have a couple of fiduciary funds. These are basically funds uh, that hold assets or have liabilities for specific purposes that's really just pass through type items uh, that don't amount to much, but they do have to be reported. Um, so just looking at the uh, government funds, again, this is kind of short-term focus, so just really focused on the current year. Um, I'll say, you know, overall, it showed a, a good year for the city. Uh, you're pretty close to your budget on most things. Uh, there was an overall net increase in your fund balances for the year. Um, in looking at you know, 2021 versus 2022 versus even into this year, uh, those statements are definitely a lot harder to figure out year to year, uh, specifically because of the things that have went on since March of 2020. Uh, some of that, you know, kind of increased some expenses that had to be expanded there, but there's also been increased funding that's been used uh, uh, through those COVID related programs. So, you know, a strictly year to year comparison for the last three years is a pretty hard thing to do. Uh, so I kind of just want to concentrate on those uh, government wide funds, like I said, the overall, the future health uh, of an entity, which is, um, is in very good shape. And then just to see where operations were for the year and operations were positive for the year again you are within your 
budget um, for revenue and expenditures. So that's the, the things that uh, we pull out of that. So with that, uh, if there's any specific items that uh, you guys have. Does anyone have any comments or questions? No, I asked my questions when we had our meeting. So, do we need to make a motion to accept this? Yes. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Okay. No questions. Okay. okay. I make a motion to accept the PKS Company PA financial statement and audit for the fiscal year ending March 31, 2022. And I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Okay, we're gonna move on now to unfinished business. Um, just as a quick preface, um, as everyone knows, we have a, a minimum of quorum here this evening, mm -hmm. and a lot of issues on our agenda on unfinished business we'll discuss quickly, but I think you'll find out that many of these are gonna be deferred because of you know recently raised questions as well as, you know, we don't believe it's Good government, good good governance to be passing um, important ordinances with simply three members of the mayor and council present. So, I just wanted to preface that. But we will move forward here with H one, which is uh, discussion and possible action regarding the engineering design cost proposal for Alaska Avenue. Um, where are we? We have. Uh, my understanding is we have a, a, a cost analysis here, yes. $28,000. Charlie, can you come tell sure. us a little bit about this? I think it's 28,000. 28,500 okay. uh, for both the board and the city mm -hmm. um, for design and bid phase services and then 25,000 for the board and the city for um, construction phase services. Um, and this is, goes all the way back to the original study we did for the city two years ago um, and we will be looking at putting in terms of the city a porous asphalt system in um, and for on the board side make the idea is to replace the sewer and the water but that you know all these things will be finalized during design um, before we go to bid um, you know, there's a whole bullet point list of items involved with the design of it in terms of survey sure. and, and gathering the information necessary to do the work. And one of the things we're going to be doing is coordinating with Del Dot for their um, Dairy Queen uh, drainage projects that, that's in the, their concept stage um, because their original concepts showed several catch basins collecting it and discharging it into the Alaska Avenue right away. So we have to talk to them before we. Well, as part of the design process, so right. we've opened those discussions already. So we'll follow up with uh, the South District of Delta. I have a question about that. Yes. Uh, when you are in those discussions with Delta, mm -hmm. will that include discussions not only about the design piece but also the financing piece as well? I mean, if they are in fact contributing, to, if if the city project and the BPW project is creating a solution for the BP, for the Delta. It seems like we want to have a partnership. We can talk to them about that. I don't know how they will respond to it, but we can certainly talk to them about that. I would say that they would they would probably respond that whether we improve the street or not improve the street, that their plan would work. But you know, we'd have to follow through on that. I please make note of that. Yeah. I'd like you to follow through with that. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um Council Alderman Jones, any no, I, questions? No, I was just saying that I, I agree with him in terms of following up on that. Yeah, we will, yeah. Uh, but other than that, uh, looking at the cost, I think, I think I'm okay with it. How does the, this cost, yeah, were you surprised by the cost at all? We had some conversations previously and we were like, you know, I don't really have a personally a really good handle on engineering design costs and stuff. But it, is, it seemed to me like I was a little surprised mm -hmm. at, at, at the, the, it seemed like, was it an increase over what would have been, well, would have been cost last year or the year before? 
No, no. I mean, we. This is pretty your, standard. Your engineer has minor price increases per year, but um, you know, nothing like the contractors or you know, mm -hmm. lead time right. on, on materials and stuff. But um, there's a lot of work involved with this one in terms of we have to get the right of way survey done. We actually have to do topographical survey. There's wetlands that need to be delineated and permits um, through DNREC and the Corps of Engineers, which will be, you know, that's a whole other mm -hmm. piece of work that's not generally included on um, on street projects. And this is a rebuild of a street. This isn't just a mill and over like, like we're oftentimes doing nowadays on our streets. This is a complete rebuild of a street. Okay. On the board side, like I said, there's water and sewer that has to be replaced as well. Can you talk a minute about what the um, where you are with the board and the approvals they have given or not given for this? They've approved it. A hundred percent. Yes. No, no strikes. Hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I want to remind everyone of is the fact that um, we have a uh, we have a goal of introducing porous pavement. Uh, whenever possible, that is, and it's an admirable, desirable goal, but it's not required of the city. And I'm wondering uh, what kind of costs we are incurring. On now, we're just talking about the engineering piece. This is what this yeah. proposal is, and then of course there'll be the construction piece. Yes. And I I think that we it'd be helpful if we actually had a, a breakdown of yeah. what what we are so. Amory asked me to do that analysis maybe 12 months ago. So okay. based on that analysis, a porous asphalt street's 30 to 40 percent more than a regular asphalt street. But I think what you have to remember when you think about that is that a porous asphalt street serves two purposes. It's the road that cars and bikes and people travel upon, but it's also your stormwater management system. So to pay a, a little bit more for Porous asphalt to serve as your as your stormwater management system. You have to consider that versus say a catch basin and piping system. If you were to do that on this project, you know it would be probably about the same additional cost, if not more. And so the cost associated with that porous engineering and the construction is a shared cost between the BPW and the city. Is that correct? Uh, not typically. The, the in, on projects past, the city has paid for the city for the street section, as is the normal way of, that we do street sections. Even though it's a stormwater related. I mean, it's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I all right. Um, when I looked at the proposal, uh, I, I'll, I'll just put it out there as bluntly as I can. <laughs> Uh, on the front page of the proposal, there are nine bullet items, mm -hmm. and of the nine bullet items, I identified four of which are uh, directly associated, only associated, I believe, with uh, BPW, uh, their, you know, pieces that they're responsible for, okay. and yet um, it seems to me that the engineering that's required to accomplish those uh, four bullets is rather engineering heavy or demanding you know in other words it's going to take a lot of resources within gmb to to meet those for the board of the city no for the board for the board. yeah um so just the way i do that is i break it out by task like okay. and you know been doing it for a long time so i have a really good idea of what every task is related to these street and utility right. projects and then I have my staff at the top of the axis in, or on the x-axis, and then I, you know, estimate hours uh, uh, based on my experience of what it would be. And it just, these are the hours that I estimated, and this is the way it came out. Right, and I can appreciate what you just described. I guess what I'm just, what I'm reacting to is the fact that we have equal costs here. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, uh, the city's expense here is identical to the BPW's expense, and yet it seems to me that the engineering would be more heavily uh, 
that it would be a heavier burden on BPW at this point in time than in the city? Uh, um, well, that's not the way I came up with it. When I did my estimate, but I'm not sure exactly based on what you said that four of the nine items were BPW. And if some of them are shared, you know. Right. Well, it, like the terracotta sewer main. Yeah, definitely uh, those are right. for BPW, but the survey and the uh, permitting and, and design and, and parts of the design are all shared costs. I, I share with what uh, Deputy Mayor Saliba has said about. I, w I was surprised at the, the costs associated with just, we're not constructing anything here, this is just design, engineer, yeah. engineering. And, and I think I had given, do you recall what the construction cost estimate yeah. was? I think it was in the four, I think it was in the $500,000 range, all total uh, between the including, yeah. city and the board. City yeah. So when you, when you look at our fees, Related to the total construction costs, it's you know right around the industry industry standard of 20 to 25 percent through construction. Thank you for answering my questions. Sure thing. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. So we have this proposal in front of us. Um, do we want to take action? Have further discussion? I mean, I, I, I don't personally have a problem with getting started on this with the 28 on that. I do hear what Tim is saying as it relates to shared costs, but I, I'm, I'm fine. This is working. This is working. Oh, it's working now. Thank you. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, are you fine with the 28.5, but not the 25? No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're I'm okay, okay with, with the. Okay, I'm okay with the Lewis service. Um, is there a motion then? Do you want to make a motion? Sure. Uh, I make a motion that we accept this uh, free the, the estimate for the city of Lewis services on this project. I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Tim? Um, no. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll i say yes. Okay. I'm ambivalent about it at this point in time. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on, H2, discussion of possible action on the proposed changes to Section 11.5, Drug and Alcohol Free Workplace Policy of the City of Lewis Employee Personnel Manual. Manual. Um, this is one of those issues that that has gone through a lot of writing and rewriting and input from staff and and a lot of progress has been made um, but I can say that there's been some concerns about exemptions for example some folks test you know safety sensitive positions CDL positions which is commercial driver license positions um, but don't do others whereas state agencies like Dell dot test everybody and um, I can just say I know there's some concerns about this and I'm not sure this is an issue that we're ready to vote on but I will certainly open the, t the floor to my colleagues to see if they have any comments on that before we uh, make well, a decision my concerns are exactly the same as yours because it does have some people that exempt in and, and uh, I don't think we can make a make a motion on this until we can clear that up a little better. So you'd like to defer? Yes, absolutely, because, um, because of that one factor. Uh -huh. Yes. Go ahead, Tim. I have no, I'll support you in, if that's a motion to defer. Yeah. We, well, I don't think we need a motion to defer to it now. I think we just do, defer, period. If that's what you're proposing. I'm going to suggest, I'm going to, I, I agree with my colleagues. I think we need to defer on this, uh, particularly w that way we can focus more on the best practices we've learned. We are starting to learn from other jurisdictions on how they test and who they test. And, and the decision on how do you come up with deferring some people 
Right. I, I, I can't figure yeah. that one out. Yeah, I but I will say a lot of work has been done already on the, on this, so and I it's moving forward. I think we just need a little more discussion. Yes. We, let's defer that to the workshop, okay. um, since we have we can have an opportunity to talk to other stakeholders. Thank you. So moving on to H three discussion and possible action on the proposed amendments to the municipal code of the city of Lewis, chapter one hundred six garbage, rubbish, and refuse. Um, so this has been basically a rewrite of the ordinance. Um, I do, I, I think, you know, I've received a recent email about Cape Shores, right. and if we all saw that, uh, and some, some questions about how they'll be treated there. I think there's been, I'm not sure there's been a lot of you know, I, I don't think it's as simple as we all think it is. No, it isn't. Especially you know, when we got the. Uh, I mean, trash talk is always yeah, different. Well, trash, yeah, trash <laughs> talk. Another uh, clever re reference from uh, Councilman Richard. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll open up. I mean, I, I've read through this a few times and I, have, I still have some questions. And, um, but I, nonetheless, I want to see what you guys think. I, uh, I'll, may I speak to the sure, first? Um, I actually think it would be benefit if we take, took this up, refer it to a workshop, and let us discuss okay. it all, all five of us. Yeah. And have members of the public, you know, community, and the community, of course. I, I agree with I you. I agree with it. Yeah, I think. Good. Ellen Lorraine, we have that? And that's going to go on the workshop. Yeah, maybe the workshop, not, yeah. Right. Okay, H, um, H4 was deleted. H5, discussion and possible action on a proposal at, at the maintenance shop to replace a concrete pad, resurface an area with asphalt adjacent to the new concrete pad and extend electrical service. So, um, is there, who can give us a little bit of background here on this? I know that this is something that is jumped up recently is isn't that safety issue? it's kind of an unbudgeted item it is and it was brought to our attention that it's an unsafe condition down there and it yeah. really is uh, there's a catch basin um that was originally part right. of work done 24 years ago i think and it's failing of course there's heavy traffic back in that back parking lot behind the maintenance building with the trash trucks um so this proposal this project includes uh, improving um, the catch basin and the concrete all around that catch basin basin adding another concrete section to eliminate uh, a flexible rigid interface that was failing as well just because it was flexible and, and, and rigid interface and then making improvements to the asphalt strengthening all the asphalt um, in the green area on the drawing to um, to where it's been failing and, and making it much stronger for the trash trucks. There's also work involved here with communications and um, running an electrical line from the building out to the fence area so that the trucks can plug into a receptacle back there and then just for some reason or another when the gas pump communication signals were put in originally literally they're like three inches deep to the top of the conduit so we're going to make them deeper and, and replace the conduit and just improve that whole situation put all the uh, concrete and asphalt back in and that's what these various proposals are for we got proposals from various contractors but we have separate ones for the concrete work the asphalt work and the electric work okay. i'd like to ask you a question about the electrical work yes uh, First of all, I recognize that the existing conduit is not to code and need, this yes. needs to be addressed. Uh, my question though is uh, relating to the, uh, the load that plugging the diesel trucks into this, is this gonna be a dedicated circuit and does the panel box in the, in the garage, uh, is there enough is there capacity in that panel box to support a dedicated circuit? Yeah, great question. It is a dedicated circuit out to the new receptacle by the fence. 
And as part of this, we'll be putting in a secondary sub panel that will give you extra breakers in the future because this would be taking up your last breaker in your existing panel. Uh -huh. And there's room in that panel box for, well, for that's why you do this for sub. this, and then there'll be a sub panel for right. future work if necessary. Uh huh. And you, and that the capacity there will be for three trucks. Is that correct, or how many trucks are we trying to? Uh. I can't answer that. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. Let me ask you another question, uh, not related to electricity, but to the uh, concrete work. Yes. Uh, in, was shown in. I think that's the green area in the map. No, it's no, the orange. Yeah, the orange okay. is the concrete. Yeah. Do I? Um, I think I understand from listening, talking to uh, some of the guys who work there in the garage. That, yeah. Uh, the trucks are um, when they're washing out the backs of the truck mm -hmm. that they. Uh, I think I understand that, that they might place the trucks on, on blocks or I think they might be raising them up in some way for it to drain into the drainage. It does drain into that catch basin and, and then the it goes right. through a grease trap that's to the right side of the exactly. plane as you look at it. And, yeah. and what I, my question is, is the failure of the concrete due to the you know the the weight of the truck is being placed on that surface and you know uh, you know it's it, for a length of time. I think the failure of the concrete is due to the weight of the trucks, but I also think that once it failed and it continuously got Works. wet and damp, that uh -huh. it kept cracking more and more, and that that's typical, especially in the winter time with freeze and thaw. Right, but what you're doing here will solve that problem. Yes, I mean, definitely. it's just not. Yeah, we're we're good. making improvements to that whole catch basin area. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. yeah. Good. So again, I, um, I think we have a situation here that is uh, roughly sixty-three thousand dollars unbudgeted, but um, I think there's been a request since it's, it seems urgent that. We move on this. Right. And um, it's a safety and health issue. Right. There's a safety right. issue involved for sure. Yeah. So um, if there's no other discussion, can we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, proposal to the maintenance shop uh, concrete pad resurfacing the area and uh, extending the electrical uh, service, bringing it into code. Well, I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, we have uh, I-6, uh, discussion of possible action on the interim plan for city solicitor. Um, so to recap, um, um, Mayor and Council voted uh, recently to issue an RFP for legal services that occurred on October 1st, that, and it closes on, I believe, November 1st. Or, and. But in the interim, um, um, our city solicitor, Glenn Mandalis, was gracious enough to send us a proposal that starting on November 1st, that uh, his firm and his associate, Alec Bur Alex Burns, would be willing to serve as counsel in the interim until um, a new, solici new solicitor is, is um, uh, accepted and hired. So um, I think, um, I think we've all seen, you know, Glenn's plan. And uh, if anyone has any questions or concerns about it, um, this is the time to ask it. Otherwise, I think we should no, take I, a vote I, I and move forward. I've had an opportunity to read the plan. I fully understand uh, what, what has been put forth, and I, I truly think we should accept it. Councilman Richard, I'll second that. <laughs> Great, so we have a motion to uh, adopt this interim plan uh, as proposed by our city solicitor. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, H8, discussion and possible action regarding a license fee for Old Town at White's Pond. Um, so this is for a license fee for um, uh, an irrigation system that will be placed by the community in the city's right of way. Um, I think there's been some discussion over the typical license fee at being at $10. 
So if we were to apply $10, there's, I believe, 85 homes in that community or 85 residential lots. So they would incur an $850 uh, fee on an annual basis. Um, but I think there's been um, some concern that is, is an encro encroachment into a right of way from a residence the same, and that fee has typically, typically been $10. Is this the same thing? where we're putting they the uh, less the folks there are putting an asset into the right of way for their benefit which is irrigation landscaping trees and, and nourishment for the grass um i mean i'm you know ten dollars seems to be to be as bit to have been the 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 standard fee but again i just want to offer it up is there any discussion on whether it's the it's the same as an encroachment. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you. I, I will uh, speak to this if you'll give me a minute. Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, because the scale of this encroachment request is much bigger, larger than what we normally see, uh, the question that I have raised is, is it appropriate for us to, uh, and correct for us to, uh, assign a encroachment fee to each uh, property, to each lot, when in fact the encroachment is a, a blanket encroachment in city right away. So in other words, it's not, it's more than, it's, it's not just one lot owner who's benefiting from this encroachment, it's the entire community, and in fact it's the entire city, because in fact, Supposedly, we hope that the trees will thrive and grow better because they're being irrigated. Uh, so there's some mutual benefit here, sure. and um, and I'm and my so my question is: Is this is it appropriate, and can we in fact assess uh, make an assessment of ten dollars per per lot? In effect, that's what we're doing is per lot, right. even though it's not one lot. It is, you know, it's not even a lot. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. And, yeah. We need to guide you. Well, but yeah, sure. I mean, well, the way I would look at this is, is that the license agreement that you've already authorized is with Showfield LS, LLC, which is going to be then transferred to the HOA. Mm -hmm. Right. So to the extent an individual lot, if you want to assess individual lot owners, if one doesn't pay, you don't have an agreement with the individual lot owner. You have it's an yeah. agreement with the HOA. So, right. I mean, you can do an assessment of a certain amount per lot, but you should still run it through the through the HOA. Mm -hmm. But then the larger question is, should it be something more since it's an extensive encroachment versus some small encroachment. I think I think that's what you're wrestling with a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and um, right, and I guess the other part, and there's an administrative question that I have too, and that is how we are going to, if we go with a an assessment of ten dollars per living unit, um, how how do we capture that administratively? Um, and then because it's ten dollars per annum. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. it's per annum, which I think so, is why it would have to be through the HOA. I mean, you know, to get and 85 invoices versus one invoice, right? Yeah, you know, right. that's just not practical. Oh, yeah, I like that yeah. idea very much yeah. about the idea mm -hmm. of one bill, if you will, sure. or one payment coming in. Um, and that's, and that's how the license agreement is set up. Paragraph three requires a payment on the first of the first of the year, first day of the month, but not, not yeah. and not only reach just. Right, just one, pay, one payment yeah. coming one from blank. Right. the HOA. Right. Right. So the HOA would likely assess their individual sure. units mm -hmm. and pay. Okay. They just build it into their budget. Right. 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 Janelle, do you, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you this mm -hmm. question. As far as your office, your department, and the um, capturing the the you know the permitting that goes with a subdivision. Uh, does this does this create any kind of administrative problem or challenge for you and your people to make sure that the um, please go ahead you. from a planning and building department this is not an issue because it would be installed now as part of their 
the utility construction. Okay. I think it would become more of an administrative issue down the road, making sure it gets built on an annual basis. If you're working because the because planning what, building department does not bill I its utility that. licenses. But, you, but you don't you create some kind of documentation that in fact would create that billing, trigger the billing? Not on no. the planning department. Side. Nothing at all that you would do? Not on planning and building. Okay. Amory or uh, Ellery? So having to prepare one invoice versus 85 would be a much better sure. route. And right. that is usually set up to do annually and we have others. And you have the oh, ability you have to, do that. to do that. Yeah, so yeah. you can do many. Okay. Okay. And I'm guessing it could be tied to one of the pro open space parcels that's owned by the association. Right. But but this property, this piece of this is not open space. Correct. Correct. But the invoice would be tied to. That's is sorry. That's a really an elementary learning question. My brain was just thinking. No, no, no. I, that's I was thinking about the open space issue earlier also because. Open you space. You try to tie it to a tax map and parcel. Right, because open space, space is not taxable, right? Uh, I, well, no, I think it's just like any other license agreement that you have with the with property owners. It's, you know, we send out a, an invoice once a year going, right. hey, go to this amount. This one would just be a larger amount because it would incorporate all of the properties. Correct. So then I'm going to turn to Ellen Lorraine and ask her. So you, you'll need to uh, add, assign a tax uh, map number to this <coughs> to this encroachment license. Is that how this will have to work? That's what we've done with others. Okay. This will be the first that it's done throughout. So we'll have to make sure we document it. Okay. But well, thank you very much. But it's something you can manage and yeah. be prepared to All right. do. That's okay. Right. Thank That's you. The answer. Thank you for your indulgence. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, does anyone have a motion? Do you want to defer? Or? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'll make a motion. Great. Uh, I, uh, the motion is that we uh, approve the uh, license fee of ten dollars per living unit. Uh, it's a per annum uh, license fee for the. Old Town at White's Pond community. And we don't need to add anything else to that, correct? Right. I'll, I'll, I'll add the license agreement and get it over them. Okay. Thank you. Then I second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So we have three more items, I believe. Um, H9, a discussion and possible action to schedule a public hearing if determined to be needed regarding an amendment to the municipal code of the city of Lewis regarding the adoption of the 2021 International Code Council building and property maintenance codes. Right. So it um, uh, should be noted that um, uh, Janelle and her team have been working on this for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have an October 16th public workshop scheduled and that is with uh, the planning department and mayor and city council, but it is also a public meeting, so everyone is um, eligible to attend. And so the question then becomes, we have that meeting, do we need a public meeting after that, which I think would be scheduled for November 6th, is the Monday of November 6th is what we have reserved. Um, so I'll just, I'll stop there. I mean, I'm open to both options, but. May I ask a question? Please. The November 6th date you mentioned, I think, mm -hmm. is that, that would be for the hearing, is that correct? Public hearing. Public, that would cover this, include this item, correct? Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with this. I have a problem with the You do? Do you? Uh, I have a problem with the date. Okay. Like the whole day, is that a question for you? So let, let me, let, in order to kind of move this forward, would you be, would you be acceptable to the idea that we do, we do have one, a meeting on October 16th, which is mayor and council with, essentially to me, it looks like we almost have two public meetings here. We, um, we can't do it, is it one month before? October. October 16th okay. and then November 6th. October 16th, what time would you do it? 
I think that's scheduled a, for two thirty. Two thirty in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. The, we do the ICC code at two, isn't it? Two thirty, because there's another meeting that's gonna probably. Yeah, that's the one you told us. Yeah. Right. She told us that. That one I got. The time has changed. The agenda was posted today. Okay. Okay. Um, that's what I can handle. Are you? I mean, I, I, I did. I think I'm amenable to both. I just think it's. I think that the 16th to me is almost like the public hearing, but I don't mind error on the side of transparency sure. having another hearing. So are you, okay, are you asking, uh, Deputy right. Mayor? Are but you are you okay with that? If we, yes. if we schedule on November 6th, a no. public hearing? No, I can't. Do I know, are you? But I, yes, I am in terms of what you're doing. Okay. I am okay with the. Of you not attending? But I'm not gonna be able to attend. Okay, well then, Okay. So I think we need to decide whether we want to have, I mean, again, we're going to have this October 16th public workshop. Right, that we're going to have. And then the, the question is, do we need, if needed, do we need a public hearing beyond that, which would be November 6th, which you cannot attend? That's correct. May I ask a question? Please. I, I was, I'm a little confused. I thought you were asking if we could include in the uh, the workshop schedule for the 16th, mm -hmm. October 16th, correct, a, uh, a hearing and at the beginning or the end that would be the public hearing for All on the same Is that day. correct? No. Uh, yes, I'm, you were saying No, that. no, I'm um, sorry if I, 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 I misunderstood. I, yeah, I may have um, misspoke. Um, we have to have so, a hearing before we have the meeting. Yeah, that, well, so, to me, the public workshop uh, seems to me like the public hearing. So you are not required to hold a public hearing. That's what it says. If, if, if you determine if you want to hold a public hearing, because this is not the zoning code. This correct. is correct. other section of the code. So I think what's being asked is if the public workshop that includes public comment is sufficient enough or would you like to hold an actual public hearing in November? A standalone. Correct. Yeah, I'm going to roll with this. Okay. But, in, but in addition to the October 16th. Correct. Because right, in addition, we definitely want to make place. sure all of council's questions are answered well in advance of you making a decision, which is why we've scheduled the October next week's meeting. Um, but of course, public will be able to ask questions as well. So yeah. Back. And you'll be here for our November council meeting, is that correct? Yeah. Which is like the 9th or something. Oh, okay. The 13th. 13th, there you go. Yeah, 13th, you're good. Yeah. All right. So, just go okay. with what so, you said. What so do we want to schedule November 6th public hearing or not? That's. If I think that's the key question. The question is, she said, if needed. If this that's is it. Needed. That's what I said. You know what? Want to. Can I make a suggestion? Sure, please. Uh, we're going to be in a workshop on the 16th, correct? And the question is, why don't we see what the temperature of the room is on the 16th? And if there is, in fact, a need for a hearing, we can, we can schedule it then. That's what and we'll have plenty of time, right? Is that OK? Yes, Would that be OK? That's exactly what I want. So, because the public hearing would require 15 days public notice, oh, 15 days. the legal ad would have to run Friday, October 20th. Yep. Oh, did I do the math right? Well, let me explain. You, you wouldn't actually would not have to do the 15 days because no. 15 days is only required for a zoning amendment. You're, if you're choosing yeah. to do a public hearing, you can do a standard seven seven day. Notice, seven day. Right. Notice, yeah. Right. Fine. Okay. So, so would that be how? What do you all think? I would be right? very comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay with everyone? Ellery, you're good? Yeah, we just change the 16th agenda. Yeah, I'll add the, and potentially schedule a public meeting. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to do that now? Okay, I mean, I think I, I think that's a, a very good solution. Okay. Yeah, and, and this appears we're complying with all the, right. all the notice okay. requirements, so that's good. Good. Excellent. And then so, everything you need for the 16th was included in today's budget. Right, it's, right. it's already okay. here, right? right. You yeah. got it, okay. And you're not going to duplicate that for us next week, so we need to. <laughs> Hold on to it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Note. Yeah, it's a lot of material, but it's good. So, um, two more items. Uh, H10, discussion of possible action regarding uh, Ordinance 11-23, an ordinance to amend the Municipal Code of Lewis. 
uh, Delaware Chapter 170 Subdivision and Land Development Code Section 170-26 General Standards and Guidelines Regarding Archaeological Requirements. So um, we have to figure out how we're going to deal with this. Um, we've had some, I know we had a hearing on this. My understanding is they're, right now they're covering subdivisions and major subdivisions, minor subdivisions. Uh, there's been some interest expressed in should that be extended to um, individual lots. And I think there's also concern about what would trigger an archaeological uh, review. Um, currently in the language it says uh, that the property would have a quote-unquote high proba probability right. of and some of it suggested that that could be replaced with reasonable right. so I think we have some issues here that are a little bit outstanding and and maybe we should have a little conversation about that um, one of the solutions I can I can suggest is that if we are fine with highest probability, we could approve the archeological um, changes as is, and then refer back to the Lewis Planning Commission to take a look at the single lots and 50% and other things like that. So we could approve this now and then Ask them to con re you know consider other changes, or we can just simply hit the pause button and defer. Um, and again, we, I think we could defer that to a public workshop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because there are issues there. Okay. I mean. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. I, uh, I I will say that uh, I do like the idea of changing the text <coughs> from high probability to to uh, the reasonable, reasonable, reasonable pro probability. And that was suggested during our mm -hmm. workshop. Yeah, I believe Barbara and Curtis. Barbara Curtis made mm -hmm. that suggestion. Yeah. So, and I, I think it's a good one. And in fact, it's actually highlighted in the letter that came in from the Historical and Cultural Affairs, the letter dated the 22nd. They, they address that high probability language also in their, in their letter. I can't help but think that this uh, reasonable is a better. If that actually has been amended. The, the ordinance has been amended to oh. update. Oh. It was amended late this afternoon. So okay. oh, okay. Blue hits refresh. Um, she might get, um, or she goes back to the agenda. I think okay. I've attached it there. Okay. Um, and you'll notice if it's in italics, those are changes that were made after the public hearing based on what you get, right. what was discussed and what I heard. Yep. Um, so there's a clear definition of professional archeologic, archeologist. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I saw it, that, yeah. Um, and then I included the full name of the um, reference guide that um, from the state that w was referenced. Right. Um, and then there was a couple other items, small items, because um, there was a concern about um, when the state gets involved and there was a clarification on that. Um, so anything in italics was, was in your packet. The most recent change today was um, to say reasonable. Reasonable probability. Mm, yeah. Right. And the other thing I want to speak to is I believe, and Glenn, you might correct me, Janelle, please speak up. Um, your suggestion, Deputy Mayor Saliba, about uh, referring this to the Planning Commission to. Uh, it, was, it was a suggestion. I understand yeah, a yeah, suggestion yeah. Um, for the single lot. I don't think that's actually the purview of the Planning Commission because uh, single lots are not reviewed by the Planning Commission. You know, they. Okay. You know, I don't development know. Development support that falls outside. Look, I, I think there's enough you know, concern here or at least questions that we should defer this for oh, okay. for for more for more discussion. So um, defer till uh, the workshop. 
workshop? I think we should do the workshop because I think we need to have a little more give and take on this. This for one. It is. Okay. But I think it's smart to defer. Yeah, I think okay. so. so we're defer. And the final uh, item on our agenda this evening is discussion of possible action regarding Ordinance 12. Dash 23, an ordinance to amend the municipal code, uh, chapter 197, uh, to create section 197-78.1, tree density regarding tree density requirements. This is a new uh, ordinance that um, our, our tree uh, subcommittee has been working fairly diligently on for you know, six to eight months, I believe, or so, maybe even longer. Over and a possibly year. Over a year, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of work. I think uh, Deborah Evalds has has been very open-minded in, in working on this project, and I know there's uh, some concerns here that have been raised because a lot of uh, we've had the benefit of watching the city of Rehoboth deal with this issue, and constitutional questions have been raised there regarding um, something we've included, and that is. If you do not agree, if you do, right now the ordinance, proposed ordinance reads, you must have one tree for every 250, uh, 2,500 square feet. So if you have a standard 10,000 square foot lot, you would have four trees. But if you do not want to have that and opt out, so to speak, there would be a fine or a contribution you could make to the city. Now, some, and I think Glenn can opine on this a little bit, uh, have viewed that as unconstitutional because that would be a constitutional extraction? Exaction. Exaction, exaction. exaction from... Exactly. It's not an extraction, but an exaction. So we're not going to the dentist's office. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, no. Well, I am next week. <laughs> so so, so no, nothing is getting pulled exactly. here. Other than this, most likely this is getting pulled from this agenda until later on. I think so. Okay, I mean, I think there's some... Glenn, can you speak a little bit yeah, to that constitutional question? What, what comes up, and this comes out, this is out of a case in the West Coast where they, they had a standard within their ordinance as to what the fee was going to be for a replacement tree. And the courts have said you can't do a constitutional exaction from a property owner. You can, what, and what that means is you have to have, there has to be some proportionality between what the fee is and what damage is being done to the community. So here, you know, what is the value of a tree? What is the value to the canopy of that particular tree that's coming out? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to do an analysis that says proportionally, you know, what's the right amount of fee in this instance and in this case? Across town, it might be a different number in that instance and in that case. There's no, uh, there's no perfect, um, you know, way to really, yeah, there's no perfect formula. Mm -hmm. That's what the courts have said. Um, so I don't know what the answer is, is whether you said it you know, artificially a little bit low, so you don't get into a situation where you're getting constitutional, where somebody raises questions about constitutional exactions. I, I would say that a lot, e even though that case exists and there's other ones like it out there, not directly re relating to trees, generally in these kinds of things, you do set a, a flat number because that's the only way that you can admit, administer right. it. Mm -hmm. And is that a federal court that on the West Coast? This is a federal court case. I can send it to you. I, the name is safe and right. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, well, I will just say this. I mean, as we referenced, uh, Deborah Evolds and her team have worked, you know, many months yeah. uh, on this issue, and I think this is another issue for deferment because, especially since. It's such a heady issue and it's been around for a while. There's questions about, there's even questions about, you know, regulating trees on private property still. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would I would hesitate to make a decision on something like this without our two other colleagues here. I have no problem. Yeah. I have no problem with that. So I would defer to a workshop. <laughs> or I'm, 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 <laughs> do, 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 does that mean you go to a workshop, you think? or? or, or I mean, I think there's the constitutional question. Is that something that needs to be explained? You I, know, I, 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 you know, if you, if you all would rather have something in a confidential memo for me, I can I can do that. So you have it. I can provide the case to you and provide some some of my thoughts and that would be go, helpful. Go from there. Uh, that would, I think that'd be very helpful. Yeah, I don't think we need to go to another. Mm -hmm. No, no, I think that would. Be 
Okay. Yeah. Has Rehoboth faced any litigation on this? They had one case. It was interesting because this, it, this is what really brought this issue to light. There was a federal judge um, out of someplace around Baltimore, someplace in Maryland, and he has property in Rehoboth, and he was doing some renovations to his property, needed to remove a tree or two, and this issue came up, and he um, filed an appeal. Rehoboth has a Parks and Shade Tree Commission, so you can appeal these sorts of things to that commission, mm -hmm. and that's where he raised all these issues of constitutional mm -hmm. exactions. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, it's, so it's come up, it's never actually been litigated um, locally because that case got resolved at the, at the, at the city level. And in the state of Delaware, it's, there's no record? There, there are cases on constitutional exactions in the state of Delaware, but not directly related to treaties. Treaties, yeah. right. Okay. All right, thank you. Glenn, does it matter that this is about planting trees in new development rather than not allowing people to take down trees that exist? Because that, that seems to be where some I, of I the things get stuck. Yeah, I think there probably is a distinction there. I think you're probably, I think you're probably right. I'll, I'll include something on that in the, in the memo. Okay, um, so I think we're going to um, defer that to the workshop. That uh, concludes this evening. Um, are there, is there anyone in the public who'd like to make a comment or a statement? Other than the Phillies are up for nothing uh -huh. and there's something special going on. How did you know that? Yeah, yeah really. It's called a um, Well, if there's no comments or anything, I uh, can I get a motion. Oh, Charlie. I, I only want to thank you for the score update because it was three nothing. Last time. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, you Emily? have on here an executive session, so if you're going into executive session, you should recess, not adjourn. We're not going oh, okay. into executive we're session. Oh. Yeah, we no, we're not. We can do that individually. I'm. I'm out of here. Uh, okay, can I get a motion to adjourn, or are you going to keep us here? No, absolutely. Right. That's what. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.